Have you ever used firmware rather than slicer retraction? Today we're going to explore whether it is indeed a better option. If you've already printed, you've probably heard of retraction, an essential part in achieving high quality prints. The vast majority of people, however, don't know that instead of setting up retraction in our slicer, we can let our firmware handle it instead. But is it worth the effort? In this video, we'll look at what retraction is, how traditional slice retraction differs from firmware retraction, how to enable it, and of course, whether it is the superior option. Let's start with a recap of the basics. Our raw material is plastic filament. It is pulled into the 3D printer by the extruder drive, melted, and then deposited out the nozzle. And the nozzle is being moved during printing to build up our desired shape. To understand retraction's role, we need to remind ourselves that 3D prints are built up layer by layer, each stacked on top of the last. If we preview one layer at a time in a slicer, this is very evident. If we pause on an individual layer, we can see that it's split into multiple sections, with no extruded plastic joining them. We might think that simply pausing the extruder as the nozzle travels to each island is sufficient, but even when the extruder drive is stationary, molten filament has the habit of continuing to ooze out of the tip of the nozzle. This happens during printing too, so as the nozzle travels between these islands, it leaves a trail behind that we describe as stringing. Stringing of course can be eliminated with retraction, giving us clean separation between our shapes, so how exactly does it work? For this demonstration, we're going to look at a print specifically made to tune retraction. The long travel move between printing each side is ideal for showing up stringing. Rather than use slow motion video, I decided to simply lower the feed rate on the printer as it was printing. And this will give us a clearer view of what's happening and why there is no stringing. If we look at the marks on the filament, we can see that once one side is complete, the filament reverses back out or retracts and then at the end of the travel move when it reaches the other side, the filament continues being drawn in and extruded as usual. When this side is printed, once again the filament will retract upwards, and when it reaches the other side, go back to its previous position and continue printing. By retracting the filament, the aim is to remove just enough pressure from the nozzle that the oozing is eliminated at least long enough for our travel move, and thus when tuned correctly, we eliminate stringing. So that's retraction, but how do we normally set it up and how is firmware retraction different? Traditionally, retraction is handled entirely by our slicer. There is some variation from slicer to slicer, but let's look at the most common elements. First up, and probably most importantly, is our retraction length. That's simply how far the filament will back off before the travel move, here one millimeter. Next is retraction speed, and that dictates the speed at which the retraction happens. Most slicers will also let you have a different de-retraction speed, the speed in which the filament is moved back to the original position after the travel move. Most slicers will let you alter the unretract distance. For instance, you might retract 1mm, but only restart 0.8mm. Most slicers have a setting called retract on layer change, and this will run the retraction parameters, not only for travel moves, but when a new layer starts. Finally, we have lift Z or Z hop expressed in millimeters. Shown here at a very exaggerated 1mm, this will lift the nozzle vertically for each travel movement and then plonk it back down to the right height on the other side. Handy if the nozzle is knocking over a delicate print, but quite often introduces stringing of its own as you can see here. So what does all of this look like when exported to G-code? Here's a sample passage. Basically we have our printing moves, our attraction, the travel move, unretract and then continue printing. And here it is in practice. We have our printing moves to build up our object, and then all of a sudden, the filament retracts, we have a travel move to the new location, unretract and continue printing. And in the case that we're running Z-Hop, the only change is a vertical Z-Hop movement up and down either side of the travel move. So that's traditional slice of retraction. So how does firmware retraction differ? When we use firmware retraction, instead of manually telling the extruder to retract, we use the G10 and G11 G codes, G10 meaning retract and G11 meaning unretract. The difference here is that the firmware understands these G codes and will handle the retraction itself according to the parameters that we've set. You're probably wondering if it's better, but before we can properly evaluate that, we need to understand the process for enabling firmware retraction. We're going to set up firmware retraction in three stages. We're firstly going to enable it in the firmware, then the slicer, and then set up the actual retraction parameters. 
or Marlin, all we need to do is to head to configuration underscore adv.h and uncomment define fw retract. There's other parameters underneath, but we can ignore them for now because they're easy to set up on the machine later on. In Clipper, there's a document I've linked to help us, but all we need to do for now is in our printer configuration file, add a section called firmware underscore retraction. In RepRap firmware, again, I've linked the document relevant to this topic. The key command we need is M207 and it needs to appear after M563. The rest of the arguments we'll cover soon. That brings us on to enabling firmware retraction in our slicer. And depending on your slicer, it's a bit of a mixed bag. If you're using Prusa Slicer, come to Printer Settings and then General and tick the box for firmware retraction. In Super Slicer, it's exactly the same. Printer Settings, then General, then tick Use Firmware Retraction. Idea Maker is equally easy. We come to Printer, Printer Settings, then Advanced, and then tick Firmware Retraction. Cura is less straightforward, but fortunately there's a plugin called Printer Settings by Field of View to make this job easier. We bring up the marketplace by clicking the button in the upper right and then scroll down the alphabetical order list before finding printer settings. We click on it and then click install. After this is done, Cura will prompt you to restart. And then in our settings filter, we can type the word firmware and we should see the firmware retraction option, which we can now tick. Just a word of caution with this plugin, read the disclaimer carefully as this plugin aims to get around the default Cura behavior and might have unintended consequences. Simplify 3D unfortunately is the worst of all, with no option for firmware retraction to be found. It can still be done with post-processing of G-code, and I've linked a guide to doing just this. It's probably not as hard as it seems. In fact, this is the same post-processing trick I use on my calibration website. Whichever slicer you're using, test that it's working by searching a G-code file and looking for G10 and G11 commands. Finally, we can set our retraction parameters like we previously would have in our slicer. We'll keep a constant example through all of this with a retraction of 1mm at 40mm per second, unretraction being slightly shorter and slower, and a z-hop of 0.2mm. Starting with Marlin, we use M207 to set our firmware retraction and z-hop. This is supplemented by M208, which allows us to have different unretract parameters, or as Marlin calls it, firmware recovery. To enter our retraction parameters, we're going to use M207, S1 for 1mm, and Z0.2 for 0.2mm Z-hop is straightforward. You'll note for the feed rate that Marlin wants it in millimeters per minute, so we have to multiply our value of 40 by 60 to get 2400. Since we want our unretraction settings to be different, we need to use M208. We enter our slower feed rate with the F argument, and for the S distance argument, this is relative, so if we want 0.8, we enter minus 0.2, as 1 minus 0.2 equals 0.8. We can enter these settings with a terminal, followed by M500 to store to EEPROM, and we also have the great option of using the new retract menu that appears under configuration on the LCD. We can use this to directly set all of our retraction parameters. Just don't forget to store settings afterwards. For Clipper, we copy and paste the example from the configuration reference, and then substitute in our values. Speeds are in millimeters per second, unretraction length is relative like Marlin, and unfortunately at this stage, Z-hop is not supported. It's also worth noting that we can change these parameters on the fly with the set underscore retraction command. For RepRap firmware, we'll flesh out what we have in our config with M207. Like Marlin, feed rates are in millimeters per minute. The unretract distance R is also relative, and RepRap firmware supports Z-hop. Finally, we're up to discussing whether or not this is worth doing. We'll start with the advantages, and for some people, they're going to be significant. The first thing to realize is that if you've set up your firmware retraction parameters, the same as what was in the slicer, then the printing process is pretty much identical, and therefore there'll be no improvement in print quality. There are benefits, they're just not so obvious. By far the biggest benefit is flexibility, and I think a large part of that is that you can change the retraction parameters mid-print. Normally when we slice a file, all of the retraction is baked in. That means we can't change it after the print starts. But what if we notice early in a long print that we have some fine stringing? With firmware retraction, we have the ability to do something about it. Even when mid-print, we can either send commands over terminal or use the retraction menu and adjust the retraction parameters. Let's say we're printing a tall skinny object, but partway through we hear the nozzle catching the edge of the print where it's curled up. 
mid print, there's nothing to stop us from adding some Z hop to give us a little more clearance and prevent a completely failed print. On my calibration website, I have a test built in where you can try different types of retraction through the same print. This is a really efficient way to dial in your retraction as it lets you see different settings back to back, but you are locked into using this specific STL. With Firmo Retraction, you can turn absolutely any print into a retraction test print by manually changing the parameters at different heights throughout the print. Firmo Retraction is also very versatile. For instance, we can retain the same G code even after upgrading hardware or switching to a tool changer. Case in point, this is a 3D printed fractal vise that conforms to the shape of most objects. There are many pieces and I printed them on my Ratrig VCore 3. That is a lot of slicing that instantly becomes redundant the second that we change any hardware on the printer. Let's say for instance we've switched to a higher flow hot end and our retraction settings change as a result. If we're using firmware retraction, we simply update these parameters in the printer and we can reprint previous jobs without re-slicing any G-code. Another example, my Ender 3 that runs two completely different extruder and hot ends to suit different materials. The physical change is very convenient thanks to the exchange system, but what's not convenient is the fact I have to run two different slicer profiles, simply because the retraction is different. To help me switch between the two, I've set up a custom menu on the LCD, which points to macros which load all the parameters for each hot end, I can simply add the firmware retraction parameters to this and then go back to using a single slicer profile. Let's take it a step further and talk about versatility in terms of print farms. If your print farm consists of exactly the same type of printer, well obviously you can run the same G code for each. But what if your print farm is made up of varied printers that still share the same bed size and use the same basic parameters such as speed? With firmware retraction, you could have one slicer profile and G-code that still works on all of them. The base G-code is the same, and the firmware retraction settings on each printer will handle the differences for hot ends and extruders. Maybe the biggest reason that you should try firmware retraction is that it's backwards compatible, and that means that traditional G-code can still be run on a printer that has firmware retraction enabled. When we enable firmware retraction, we're simply teaching the printer to recognize and deal with G10 and G11 G codes. But that doesn't mean that it can't process the old G code that you were using before. To demonstrate this, on my Ender 3 with firmware retraction enabled, I ran the previously sliced G code with retraction set up by the slicer. And as you can see, the result is exactly the same. So we're not giving up any functionality by enabling this feature. In fact, if you're using Marlin, you can use M209 to set up auto retract, and while printing, the firmware will look for traditional retraction commands and substitute in your stored firmware retraction parameters instead, allowing you to run really old G code, perhaps sliced with retraction for a completely different hot end. But of course, there are downsides too. Downside number one is that not all retraction features are supported, an example of this being wipe while retracting. This type of wipe takes place mid-retraction, so it must be turned off in the slicer to suit. And as we saw earlier, Z-Hop is not supported in Clipper currently, so to retain this combination, you might need to play with the slicer a little. But probably the biggest downside is the mixed compatibility. As we saw, firmware retraction is not officially supported in Cura or Simplify 3D, and once again, the Z-Hop component is not supported in Clipper. Depending on your hardware and software, this either won't be a problem at all, or instead will be a huge barrier to you trying firmware retraction. Finally, not all Marlin printers will be compatible, simply because the manufacturers don't provide the Marlin source. Firmware retraction isn't turned on by default, and without the firmware source, you won't be changing that. It's also worth noting that if you're not using Octoprint to have easy access to a terminal, or your Marlin printer uses an interface that's not the traditional LCD, it's going to be a lot less convenient to configure firmware retraction. Personally, I'm going to leave firmware retraction enabled and experiment some more. But what I'd really like to know is what you think. If you're someone who's tried it, let me know how it went. And if you're someone who didn't even know it existed, are you going to give it a try now? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing.
G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.